Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial series on kinematics. Today's topic is speed versus velocity, and here's what we wish to learn. There's two big concepts and then two things that we would wish to be able to do. First concept is speed. What is speed? Particularly, what is instantaneous speed, and how is it different than average speed? Second topic is velocity. What is velocity, and how is it related to speed? The third and the fourth thing we wish to accomplish in this video are to do things. We want to understand how do we calculate the average speed or the average velocity for any given motion. And then finally, how do we analyze a multi-leg motion in order to determine the average speed and or the average velocity. Let's get started. We begin with what is speed. Speed refers to how fast an object is moving. It's a pretty simple definition, and when you think about it, the first thing that probably comes to your mind is a speedometer. So what does a speedometer measure? Well, it measures your speed with units of maybe miles per hour, or kilometers per hour, or meters per second. So think about the unit, kilometer, or mile, or meter. That's a distance per or divided by hour or seconds, that's a time. So what a speed tells us is the amount of distance traveled per unit of time. And that's our best working definition for what is speed, the relative amount of distance traveled per unit of time. Now, speed is a scalar quantity. Whenever we say something is a scalar quantity in physics, what we're communicating is that it's a quantity that's described fully by magnitude alone. That direction is not involved in describing the quantity speed. So here we see two cars and they're moving in opposite directions, each with a speedometer reading of 20 meters per second. These two cars have the same speed. Since direction doesn't matter when it comes to speed, as in for any scalar quantity, we can say these two objects have the same speed. Speed is ignorant of the direction of motion. Now we're going to contrast the concept of instantaneous speed and average speed. If you ever noticed watching your speedometer over the course of a trip, it's going all over the place. The speed is seldom constant. It's changing over the course of a motion. And in any given instant in time, whatever the speedometer reads, that's what we refer to as your instantaneous speed, the speed at any given instant in time. If you look at the data table there, you'll notice all sorts of speeds taken on my trip to school for the first five minutes of travel. I recorded it every one minute interval, and you'll notice how often it changes. Now if I could take those values of speeds at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 minutes and average all of those, maybe even take more data points and average all those data points, what I'm doing is I'm finding the average of all those instantaneous speed values. I'm finding the average speed. That's what the average speed is. It's like a time-based average of all the instantaneous speed values taken over the course of motion. That's what would be a very difficult thing to do, but fortunately, there's a shortcut. To find the average speed, rather than doing the averaging of all those instantaneous speed values, we can simply take a distance and divide it by the time. Take the total distance traveled and divide it by the total time of travel. You see the equation there on the slide. Another way to write it is the shorthand symbolic version, VAV, where VAV stands for average speed, equal D divided by T, where D stands for distance and T stands for time. That's known as the average speed equation. You'll probably use it a lot in physics. The equation gives us an idea of how to calculate the average speed, but it doesn't tell us what it is. So let's take a moment to talk about what does it mean to have an average speed of 20 meters per second? Well, first, it could mean a lot of things. It could mean that you move 20 meters and traveled for one second, or it could mean you moved 10 meters and traveled for a half of a second. It could even mean you moved 40 meters and you traveled for two seconds. What it really means is that you travel the distance of 20 meters for every one second of motion, whether you traveled for exactly one second or not. That's what average speed tells you. It tells you the distance per time ratio 
over the course of a motion. Now, here's an example of using the average speed equation. We see a car that's moving along a path for about 12 minutes. And during that time, it's stopping and starting and stopping and starting. I can imagine there were times when the instantaneous speed was maybe 50 miles per hour and other times it was zero miles per hour. But when we go to calculate the average speed, we're getting an average of all those instantaneous values. So this car traveled five miles in 12 minutes or 0.2 hours. And so to calculate the average speed, we're going to have to take that distance of five miles in that time of 0.2 hours, and we're going to have to divide. And when we do, we get our average speed value. It was 25 miles per hour. Now let's take a further look at that equation, V average equal D over T. In physics, oftentimes you're given a question where you have to calculate the average speed. So you'd use the equation far left. But sometimes you have to calculate the time or the, dis or the distance traveled. So you need different forms of that equation. If we were to apply algebra to that equation, and isolate time so that we'd have a t equal equation, we'd have the equation there in the middle. And if we were to isolate the, uh, the distance, we'd have the qu equation on the far right. So here's three faces of the same equation. Depending on what you're asked to solve for, you might pick the one on the left, the one in the middle, or the one on the right. So now we come to the topic of velocity. What is velocity? We'll start with the textbook definition. It's the rate at which the position changes. Velocity is a vector quantity, and as such, it has a magnitude and it has a direction, just like any vector quantity. And in any given instant in time, if we ask, what's the magnitude? Well, that's simply the speedometer reading. And if we ask, what's the, what's the direction? It's the compass reading. And so, speedom so velocity is speed with the direction at any given instant in time. Now, when we say velocity is a vector, one thing we mean is that the direction matters. It's not a quantity that's ignorant of direction. It's very conscious of the direction. Here we see two cars, the same two cars we saw earlier. And when we saw them, we said, these two cars have the same speed. But they're moving in different directions. Speed was that scalar quantity that ignored direction, but velocity is the vector quantity, and it has to give attention to direction. And so when we describe these two cars, we describe them as having different velocities because they have different directions. Velocity has a magnitude and a direction, and while these cars may have the same magnitude of velocity, they have a different direction. So one of them has a velocity of 20 meters per second to the right, that's the top car, and the other has a velocity of 20 meters per second to the left. In describing the cars this way, I'm using the rule that the direction of the velocity vector is simply the direction that the object is moving. We mentioned earlier that velocity is the rate at which the position changes. And so on average, if we wish to calculate the average velocity, we need to take a overall position change and divide it by a time change. Another way to put that is we need to take a displacement and divide it by a time of travel. You see the equation listed there, average velocity equal displacement divided by the time. That's known as the average velocity equation, and we can rewrite it using symbols, and you see that at the right. Vav, for average velocity, equal the distance divided by the time or sorry, the displacement divided by the time. So in this equation for average velocity, the D stands for displacement or position change, and the T, of course, is time. Now, we've seen an equation like this earlier. It was called the average speed equation. So you have to be a little careful here, because you notice I'm doing something that some people might regard as a little bit sloppy. I'm using the same equation for the, or the same symbols for two different equations. The equations look the same when you look at the shorthand notation, but in the average speed equation, the D stands for distance, and in the average velocity equation, the D stands for displacement. 
Writing these two different equations with the same symbols can be confusing, but they also can assist you in remembering just one equation. And what I'd like you to try to remember is that velocity of the vector depends on displacement the vector, and speed the scalar depends on the scalar called distance. That might help you remember when should I use d for displacement and d for distance. Now, um, that's, the, that's the cautious part that you have to be careful about. Now, we're going to look at direction change here. We see two people walking. One of them walks two meters forward, two meters backward, and the other person just does a straight walk 12 meters in one direction. Now, when we're done, we end up having two people, person A and person B, who's walked 12 meters and done it in 12 seconds. So since average speed is a distance traveled per time of travel, both person A and person B have the same average speed. Speed, the scalar, didn't depend on the fact that the person A never changed direction and person B did. But velocity, the vector, does depend upon these direction changes. Every time person B turns around and walks back towards the starting point, person B begins to decrease the overall position change and thus the overall average velocity. And so what we notice is that when we're done, person B's right back where they started, a round trip motion, has an overall displacement or position change of zero meters. And so person B has an average velocity of zero meters per second, whereas person A on the top has an average velocity of one meter per second to the right. That's the importance of direction change when it comes to talking about velocity. Now we're going to look at what I would regard to be one of the more difficult problems you could have with average speed and average velocity. It's what I call a back and forth problem. It requires some skill and some patience, a little bit of diagramming, and some good thinking. Here's the problem. Coach Ulcer paces the sideline, starts at the 10-yard line, position A, moves to the 40-yard line, B, back to the 0-yard line, position C, and finally to the 30-yard line. There's a back-and-forth motion. It all takes 100 seconds, and we have to determine his average speed and his average velocity. So to begin, what I would always do is take all these words and translate it into a diagram. Draw myself a number line, give it some markings like 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 yard lines, and then put the coach at position A and B and C and D and draw a diagram that looks something like this. Now we have to calculate the average speed and the average velocity, and the average speed depends on distance, so I'm going to need to calculate the distance traveled for this multi-leg motion or this back and forth motion. And then to do the average velocity calculation, I'm going to have to find the overall displacement or overall change in position. So here's how I'd get the distance. I have to calculate the total amount of ground covered. A to B is a total distance of 30. And then B to C is another 40 yards. And then C to D is another 30 yards. And if you add all that up, that's a distance of 100 yards. So that's the overall distance. Now I also have to get the change in position. That's a little bit easier because the person starts at A and finishes at D. And the overall position change is 20 yards to the right. Now once I get these two values of distance and position change, I can now calculate the average speed and average velocity by simply dividing the numbers by 100. When I divide the distance of 100 yards by 100 seconds, I get 1.0 yards per second, and that's the average speed. When I divide 20 yards to the right by 100 seconds, I get 0.2 yards per second to the right, and that's the average velocity. Okay, now it's your turn. Coach Alser paces the sideline, starts at the 30-yard line, moves to the 10, back to the 50, and finally to the 20-yard line, does it in 200 seconds, and you have to do the same thing, calculate the average speed and average velocity. So I'd like you to pause this video, and then go ahead and start with a diagram. Take some time to solve for these two quantities. If you need to go back and look at how I did the earlier question on slide 16, that's great. When you're ready, press play and see how you did. Okay, 
Here's what your diagram would look like if you drew it, drew it correctly. You'd start the coach at the 30-yard line, then he moves to the 10-yard line, then he moves from the 10 to the 50, and from the 50 back to the 20. And what's more, you're going to need to calculate the overall distance traveled and then the overall change in position. The overall distance traveled is the A to B distance, 20 yards, the B to C distance, plus 40 yards, and the C to D distance, another 30 yards. When you add all of that up, you get a distance of 90 yards, but the overall change in position is just the distance from A to D. That's 10 yards to the left. Now once you got those two numbers for distance and displacement or distance and position change, divide by the 200 seconds and you can get the average speed. Be sure to indicate a direction on that average velocity calculation and you have your answers. You've done it. So we set out to understand two concepts, the concept of speed and the concept of velocity, to understand what instantaneous speed is and how it's different than average speed, and to understand how velocity is related to speed. And we also set out to figure out how do you calculate the average speed and the average velocity equation. We've done all that. And finally, we've analyzed a multi-leg back and forth style trip. Now accompanying this set of four questions here that we've covered is a little review that shows it's in the form of a table and it shows some of the things we've been talking about over the, this video and the previous ones. We've been talking about scalars and vectors, distance and displacement, speed and velocity. And it's nicely organized there for your reference. And coming up next, we're going to be talking about acceleration. So I hope you join us for that. Thanks for sticking with me to the end. It's at this time that I'd like to give you an action plan. Something that you can do to kind of seal up these ideas about speed and velocity. But before I do, I'd like to help you, ask you to help us out a little bit. If this video is helpful, there's a little like button below the video. Why don't you click on it and give us a like. Also, you may want to subscribe to our channel. We're going to be producing lots of video content over the next year. Subscribe to our channel and get notifications whenever a new one comes out, which will be quite regularly. And finally, um, there's, a, there's a place to leave a comment or ask a question. Go ahead and feel free to do that. We'll try to get back in touch with you. Now, an action plan. First thing that I'd like to suggest you do, if you're having troubles with distance and displacement, that's kind of fundamental to understanding average speed and average velocity calculations. So why don't you head off to the physics classroom or our website and go to the concept builder section. It's about the third, fourth choice down and go into the kinematics area and tap on the distance versus displacement concept builder. It's a great way to freshen up on your understanding of those two ideas, distance and displacement. Second idea, if you're a minds on physics user, you have it on your phone or your, your tablet or your computer, why don't you try downloading Minds on Physics app number one. There's three modules there. The first one's called Kinematic Concepts, and if you get into that Kinematic Concepts module, there's a mission KC3 on the topic of speed and velocity. Be a great thing to do. Why don't you try that? And then finally, we have a tutorial, a written tutorial on our website, and it makes for a great reference. So if you're having troubles with this idea of speed and velocity, why don't you head off to our head, the website, click the first link, which takes you to the written tutorial called the Physics Classroom Tutorial. Go to the Kinematics chapter and click on speed versus velocity. It's a great reference for you, a great review of some of the things we've talked about here in this video. Good luck to you.